I've sold hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of print on demand metal art and there's people on Etsy that are making tens of thousands of dollars each and every month. In this video, I'm going to take you through the nine most common mistakes I'm seeing people making when they're creating their metal art stores. Avoid them and you're going to enjoy the process to your $10,000 plus a month so much more. Let's go. Now, before we get into it, make sure you like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and stick around for tip number nine. It is by far the most important tip when it comes to metal art mistakes. If you're making it, chances are you're not going to be making sales. Let's go. One of the first mistakes I see people making is they're not pricing their products correctly. So for an example here, I've got T-Launch, and T-Launch breaks out their, their costs. So you've got the hard cost of the product itself, and the shipping cost alongside it. So what I like to do in this example is actually roll them all into one. So the example I've got here, so if we're using the 18 inch, for example, we've got $31.50 for the product cost and $12.50 for the shipping cost. I've added those together and we've got $44. So using 100% markup, and I use that as a rule of thumb for uh, my metal art pieces, I mark it up by 100% and then round it up to the closest 10 usually higher because I want to make more money. So for an example here, the 18 inch piece would be selling for just under $90. So there is the pricing I'm using when I'm pricing my metal art. The thing is also as you get larger, you can mark up much more than that 100%. So there's 36 inch pieces, so $105 for the product cost, $35 for the product itself. So that's $140. So I'd be happy to sell that at the 299, even up to $350. If you're selling on Etsy, make sure you're marking it up 160% so you can get a 40% discount on that and you're still selling for relatively that same sort of price. I hope that's the right math. I hate doing public maths, but it should be pretty close. Next up, what I'm seeing people doing is they're making their designs far too intricate. So with this particular piece here, what we wanna be mindful of when we're creating our metal art is that pieces are connecting. So the more rigidity we can put into these pieces, the more rigidity they're going to have through the shipping process and when the customer gets it and they're gonna hang them on the walls. So here, what we can see is it lacks that. So there's one for this entire arm here, we've only got that one support up here. The same over here. The, all, that whole arm over here is only supported by this. What happens is it's going to bend very, very easily. Now, down at the bottom here, we've got a design that's far more rigid. Rigid's good. So we've got pieces that are connecting in more spaces, they're thicker. So these things have that strength they need when the couriers are treating them like Frisbees or worse, like wheel ramps. I've had some pieces show up that are cupped. I have no idea how they managed to do it, but they do it. We need strength in these pieces. The other mistake I see sellers making is they're making the designs far too intricate. So we can see a design here that I've had plenty of people show me over the years that they're doing. And every time I see it, I'm like, oh my God, this must take those machines so long to create this piece of metal art. Each cutout means it has to lift and then penetrate back through that metal again. Every time it does that, it is taking longer and longer to create these pieces. So what we wanna do is keep our designs super basic, basic cells, ugly cells. It does not need to be intricate like this. If we can strengthen our pieces like this mountain here, making those connections thicker and in more places, we're gonna be far better off. Now, when you're designing your pieces, you wanna make sure that there's spots on the design where people are gonna use for mounting holes. So for instance, this design on the left here, there's tons of different places people could use to get a really good mount on here. So putting a, a nail here and a nail there, that's a really good way of being able to hold it up. Whereas if you do it on a piece of metal that's as solid as a circle, you wanna make sure that you've got a mounting hole on there. Otherwise, there's just no way humanly possible that you're gonna be able to hang that without those magnetic screws. And if you're looking for those magnetic screws and really good quality metal art, you need to check out My Easy Monogram. What Brad's doing over there is sensational and they've got so many updates that are coming that I'm super, super excited for. So make sure you keep an eye out on that. But what you wanna do is really make sure that you're taking into account that the mounting holes are in there. The thing to make sure though, when you are creating these pieces with the mounting holes, that these holes that you put on there are going to scale with the different size of the metal as well. So just keep that in mind. That's why when I'm designing, I really like to use the art itself and create spaces on that design that are going to allow it to be mounted 
without that problem. When people first get started with print on demand, what I often see is them spending far too long creating a store full of all these different wonderful products. The problem is you don't know which of those products will sell, if any. You are far better off spending your time testing running paid marketing to one specific product or listing one specific product and seeing how the market responds to that particular product. That way, with the data that you get back, you can respond. You can keep making the same and make more sales or you can move onto a different product that has more potential. Your time is finite and particularly when you've got kids to run around after or you've got a nine to five, you need to make sure your time is best spent on the money-making activities. That is, the research to spot those opportunities, the design to improve on them, and the marketing to put those products out in front of the people that are most likely to buy. Now, the reason for this is that when people come to your store, they are coming because you've marketed that one product to them and it's connected. They loved it. They've come to your store to see whether or not it's within that price range. And if it is, they will buy. They are not coming in there to browse around to see what else you're selling. People's attention spans are so minimal these days that you need to make sure that you're just testing each design one by one. Something else to be mindful of when you're creating your designs is that you're not creating weapons. These things can be super, super dangerous because they are cut by a laser cutter. They can be very, very sharp. So this design on the left here is a very good example of how not to create your designs. And the same with the one on the right here. What happens is these pieces, each of those points has the potential to injure your customer. You don't want injuries. You want happy five-star reviews coming through, not lawsuits because they've stabbed themselves with one of your designs. So always make sure when you're doing it, you're rounding out those ends still looks really good. It just removes that potential injury risk on your designs. Now, another thing to be mindful of when you're creating these designs, you would have seen that there's a lot of these line art style images getting around. They look amazing, but they're super fragile. The thing to keep in mind though, the thinner the lines are, the more chance they have of melting out when they're on the laser cutting table. Because it's heat, that heat transfers into the metal and if it's too thin, it's going to drop out, meaning the connection will no longer exist. So when you're creating a design, Thicker is always better. So be mindful of that in those designs. Here, there's plenty of instances here where you'd be very, very lucky if it even got through on that cutting table. Pay attention. This is similar to tip number six, but this is by far the most important. Instead of creating a million dollar brand, making sure the fonts, the colors, the brand kit that you're using is all amazing and looks like a million dollar brand, focus on getting your first sale, getting those first 10 sales, because focusing on that will have you finding your success far sooner. That is by far the most important tip I can give you. Focus on getting your products out in front of your market that are most likely to buy it. Now, if you'd love my personal guidance and the step-by-step -step roadmap to creating a $5,000 to $10,000 per month print-on-demand business in as little as two hours a day, so you can create that time, freedom, and financial independence, then make sure you check out Podhacks, my coaching program. You can click it with the first link in the description below. There, watch the quick training. And if you love the sound of it, make sure you book a call with my team and I, and I'll have a chat to you over there. But if you want to learn more about metal art and exploding those sales, then make sure you watch this video next. Stay awesome.